Hello, uh, ladies, gentlemen, uh, fellow Nuffield scholars. Um, I'm privileged to be here. Um, I didn't realize as I would, when I went for my interview, that uh, I would actually get here, yet alone complete a report. Uh, <coughs> um, I would like to thank the Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust uh, and also my sponsor, the Royal Welsh Agricultural Society, for all their support. And uh, I'd also like to thank my, my family, my wife and children, uh, my friends and uh, neighbours for actually enabling me to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. Um, as we go through this now, I'll, I'll just sort of explain what I'm going to do. I'll just explain why, uh, why I chose my subject, where I went, uh, what my conclusions were, and also a little bit after following on from, from what I've, I've seen. Right, uh, <clears throat> so this is where I live. Uh, I live in uh, hills in Mid Wales. Um, we're just, uh, if anybody knows where the Railway Showground is, we're just a little bit to the east of that. Um, beef and sheep farm. Uh, we uh, produce uh, Welsh black cattle. Uh, we've got a small herd of them, and then mainly sheep. We've got just about 850 sheep of mixed breeds. And um, we, uh, it's a family farm. Um, my father was actually born here. Uh, well, my, daughter, my eldest daughter, her bedroom was where he was born, and so she's, uh, she's quite chuffed about that. Um, yeah, the sheep, we've, got, uh, we've also got a performance-recorded uh, Texel flock that we breed our own rams from, and uh, these are some of them. And uh, it would be, this is what uh, actually brought about my scholarship. Uh, we started uh, performance-recording uh, both our cattle and our sheep in 2009, and we've targeted growth rates, but only not and just not only growth rates, but we've also gone for muscle depth because uh, muscle depth is the red meat that we are producing to sell. Uh, <clears throat> so as we were going on, years on year on year, producing more and more, uh, hopefully better muscled livestock, I felt that uh, the current grading and payment system that we have wasn't rewarding me for my increased meat production. So um, this is the current uh, grading system that we have. This, this is a, a typical Europe grid. Uh, you can see why it's called the Europe grid, the, the names across the top, the letters across the top. Um, it measures uh, confirmation and fat cover. So the confirmation across the top, E, U, and R, uh, E being the, the most conformed, and P being the least conformed, and then uh, the fat cover is one down to five, one being the least uh, fat, and five being over fat. And then um, obviously then depending where you are on the grid, as you, your price is from the base price. Um, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, an animal, a carcass comes down the end of the kill line, and there's a grader stood at the end of the line, and he just visually assesses that carcass and he says, right, well, that's um, whatever grade it is for confirmation and fat cover and awards the carcass a grade. And then that ends up on the grid and then gives you the final value from where your base price is with your penalties and bonuses, hopefully, if you have them. Uh, that gives you the final value of your uh, carcass. One other thing I should say about it is the, the speed of the kill line. Um, most abattoirs are quite capable of going at 600 carcasses a minute, as an, an hour, sorry, a minute. Six, that's rattling on, that is. Uh, 600 carcasses an hour. So that grader has to visually ass assess that animal and record its grade every six seconds. So he has to totally assess that carcass at that speed. This is just to give you a bit more of a, a visual of what the confirmation is. So they've got the best confirmation this end, the poorest over the other end. I'll just point out as well now the, uh, the value, where the value of meat is on a, on a carcass. So you've got, um, we'll chop him off there, you've got the legs from there back, and you chop it off there, you've got the shoulder from there forward. And just as a pro rata value, the shoulder is equivalent of one, the hind legs 
the equivalent of two, and the line, the bit in the middle, is a value of four. So the, the line is actually the lightest part of the carcass, which would be about 12 to 15 percent of the carcass, but actually it has half or greater of the value of the carcass because of its high value. That's where all your, your premium cuts are. Um, one other thing I'll just show now as well is good to, time to show that is um, for the actual farming side of things. Um, you imagine trying to give birth to that compared to that. The, the shoulders, the uh, extra birthing problems that are caused by the Europe grid because people are chasing the bonuses of the better confirmation, but it actually has a big effect on the welfare and the profitability of, of our system because there's more birthing problems and then we have uh, greater losses and also the, the females, the dams don't last as long because they've had a harder birthing experience. Right, so the countries I visited, uh, I went uh, firstly to Ireland uh, back in June 2013 and then Australia and New Zealand at the end of 2013 and America uh, in January this year. So I went to Ireland. Um, the reason I went to Ireland was um, that the fact that they are obviously there within Europe. They're on the same grading system that we have, um, which is the Europe grid. The biggest difference is uh, a few years ago, the government gave grants uh, for the abattoirs to uh, install VIA systems. Now VIA is a visual image assessment. And the carcass passes in front of a camera array and the photographs are taken of that carcass. And you can see the, the stripes, the light and shade stripes actually give a perspective of the carcass. So it gives a depth. The cameras can then pick out the depth of what that carcass is. Uh, it then compares the image it's taken with a database of thousands of uh, pre-graded carcasses. So the carcasses before being graded, it'll then compare that and find the nearest image to this. And then it awards it, it's a grade. So it's consistent. There's no, um, there's one of the other things with the Europe grid, different grader will give the same carcass a different grade. So it actually affects our final value. So this is consistent. So I was quite impressed with that. And then I, when I went to Australia, I went to, to look particularly at uh, the Meat Standards Australia system, um, which was m based more on eating quality. Uh, so they, they also looked at uh, the animal prior to death. Uh, the, they looked at the breed content. They, they were looking particularly for what they call Bos Indicus, which is the, the hump-backed, hump-necked cattle, the, the more drought-resistant cattle. It's their eating quality is that meat is a lot tougher. So they, they were looking for breed content, meat color for marbling, for fat death, uh, for maturity, so how long that the meat would be matured after slaughter, and also the ultimate pH, which they're actually checking there. And that's the, the pH of the meat once it's cooled, once it's chilled. And that has a big effect on the eating quality. Uh, so then they take all these uh, factors into account and then they score the meat um, for six different cooking methods. So it's grilling, uh, roasting, pan frying, uh, all the different methods. And they give it a score from one to five. Uh, but I only ever saw a score from three to five, so, so they obviously don't produce any poor quality meat in Australia. <coughs> I then went over to uh, New Zealand. Um, in New Zealand, there's two main uh, uh, farmer-owned processors, farmer co-ops. Uh, one is Alliance, and the other is Silver Fern Farms. Uh, this is, uh, Alliance have chose the VIA system. So this is um, a VA system for lamb, and you can see there then it, the, the picture it takes of the lamb, and it works out the yield, it works out the yield for the leg, the loin, and the shoulder. And so that, that's very similar to which I talked about before, the VIA. And um, silver fern farms uh, are looking at uh, x-ray grading. And uh, this is a, when um, lambs now, carcasses, will actually pass in through a, an x-ray room and then you are given a, uh, 
an image of that and from the computer uh, software behind that they're able to work out the meat the fat and the bone yield um, so the big advantage of that was uh, the fact that robot robotic cutters could be following the system they could then um, cut exactly in between the ribs or wherever they were so it is all robotic uh, processing of the lamb uh, the carcass after Whilst well, so also in this, uh, New Zealand, there was one thing I saw, was uh, spray chilling. Uh, the way carcasses are chilled in the UK, they're just put into a, a fridge. Uh, whereas in New Zealand, or in this abattoir, it wasn't in everyone, but in this one, um, they're actually s s chilled with cold water. So they're in a fridge, but it's cool water, and it actually eliminated, well, not quite eliminated, but more or less eliminated the cold weight loss, uh, the weight from chilling. So they kept full weight. Uh, <coughs> went to America. Um, I just thank the two gentlemen on the right. Uh, the cowboy is uh, Randy Hammerstrong, and he was a USDA market reporter. And uh, he took me around a lot of the feedlots and, and stuff that I went to see and, and the markets. And then the gentleman on the right was Leonard Woody, and he's a USDA grader. And he showed me, he's got me into all the slaughterhouses I went. So their system is very similar to um, um, Australia. Uh, they look at uh, the, the feed, uh, the breed, the age, the sex. And they were also very interested in the glycogen levels, which are the energy levels within the animal at the point of kill, as that has a large effect on the eating quality. Uh, they then physically, physically examine the carcass 24 hours after kill. They um, rib the carcass oh, pressed the wrong button there sorry uh, they rib the carcass which is they cut it the fore and the hind quarter are partially separated to expose the eye muscle they then look at um, the area of the eye muscle the color of the red meat and uh, uh, also the marbling and you can see then from the they compare cards for the level of the marbling so uh, <clears throat> my conclusions are that uh, the Europe grid, after doing all my travels, I think is the Europe grid is not fit for purpose. It, um, it favors confirmation, which does nothing for eating quality, because we must not forget eating quality. If we want our consumers to eat another piece another day, we, we need to look after that. Um, it, it doesn't reward the more efficient carcass. So the ones that are actually producing more meat are not being properly rewarded. Um, I believe that a, a mechanical system would be consistent and uh, it would also go across all the abattoirs in the country. And while we're at it, I think we should um, uh, change the, um, the whole weighing system. At the moment, we're paid to the nearest half kilo and I believe we should be paid to the, down to the point one of a kilo rather than being rounded down. After all, when, when consumers buy the meat, they pay for every gram, yet we're giving away, could be up to half a kilo. Um, I think that then by having the, um, a grading system on meat yield, it would make the whole production cycle more efficient. The fact that we haven't got less, less lambing problems, calving problems. Uh, and I think as uh, we should, education, not only for farmers, but also for consumers, Farmers, we, as I speak for myself as well, we need to realize that we are food producers and we're putting meat on somebody's plate. Um, as consumers, that actually not all fat is bad. And if you want to enjoy that piece of meat, you'll have to uh, actually cook it. To cook it properly, you need a little bit of intramuscular fat. I'm, sorry, I'm pushing on my time here, so we'll just zoom on through. Um, the, uh, an objective saleable meat based classification system would improve the whole production system. And I'll just go a little bit on about what we've been doing. Oh, it's two at a time there. What we've done since completing my Nuffield. Um, I've been involved and actually have been asked to do a presentation at a group which is bringing together all interested parties um, from the farmers. Uh, meat processors, supermarkets, a few government officials, if they'll turn up. Um, 
Uh, my report has also been put in front of the Minister for Agriculture for Wales. And um, since the CSE, when I was talking to fellow Nuffield scholars, particularly in the dairy industry, and what their discussion groups, how much they thought they benefit, benefited from that, uh, we're trying to set up a comparable farm profit group for forage-based lamb producers in Wales. Um, and this is what else. I, on my travels, I saw um, cell grazing in um, New Zealand. Um, I saw strip grazing in Ireland. And as you can see, it's a slightly wetter at my place. They're making a bigger mess, but we're, uh, this is all winter grazing. So we, it's the intensification of cell grazing. And also uh, following on, we've had a few open days and I've done a few other talks and stuff. And now Ed is going like that. So I think I better stop. Thank you very much. <clears throat>